Welcome to section 42 of the viruses. This is our virus overview figure, and in this video we will be discussing the hepatitis A virus, which you can see right here. This image continues the story of the villainous peacock emperor. Here he is being carried on a palanquin shaped like the letter A. He's being carried by two strong cows, both with prominent liver spots. The liver spotted cows carrying an A-shaped palanquin will help you remember that this is hepatitis A. Did you notice all the warm colors in the sky? Just like in previous videos, this red warm color scheme indicates that this is an RNA virus. There's also this nice rainbow up in the sky. This positive rainbow indicates that this RNA virus is positive sense. And just like in our other videos, we use the peacock emperor to help you remember that this is a picornavirus. And as always, this peacock emperor carries this rod with an icosahedral gem on top. So you won't forget that hepatitis A has an icosahedral capsid. And if you look in the sky, you can see this asteroid breaking into smaller asteroids as it descends to the Earth. Just like in the previous videos, this represents a big protein getting cleaved into smaller functional viral proteins. One of the smaller asteroids has landed near the cows, and with all that heat the asteroid gathered, it actually caught some of the dry ground near the cow's feet to catch fire. So this fire near the liver-spotted cows is here to emphasize the fact that hepatitis A is inflammation of the liver. Another asteroid has hit the roof of this building over here. This has caused the entire building to catch on fire. Look at this poor, terrified, naked pig who fled the building. Now he's just confused and scared. Although this pig has a little black box covering important parts, it's obvious that this pig is completely naked. This will help you remember that hepatitis A is considered a naked virus because it lacks an envelope. Now this pig over here has just been captured by one of the wolf guys. This net wrapped around the naked pig, fully engulfing him, represents the fact that naked viruses enter host cells through endocytosis. And here's an IRS henchman holding a poor town pig upside down and shaking him for all of his money. This IRS henchman will help you remember the internal ribosomal entry site, or IRES. If you need a refresher on this concept, please see the video on poliovirus. And as usual, this emperor peacock has a small army of wolves trailing him wherever he goes to help him carry out his nefarious plans. You can see a line of wolves back there. This line represents the fact that hepatitis A is a linear virus. One of the asteroids has landed over here, hitting the roof of the building. In doing so, it landed in this pile of snow, causing snow and snowflakes to be hurled into the air. These snowflakes look just like the pentamers of IgM antibodies. And the fact that these snowflakes are descending down on the town, which is currently experiencing mayhem, will help you remember that IgM antibodies are present during the acute infection of hepatitis A. This makes sense because IgM antibodies are the first antibodies to form during an infection. So if you want to confirm hepatitis A infection in a patient, serological examination will reveal the presence of anti-hepatitis A IgM antibodies. When this other asteroid on the far left actually descended to hit this roof, it knocked down this nest on its way down. These eggs represent the incubation period of hepatitis A. And the fact that they are sitting here, not on any long branches, indicates that the incubation period is short. Plus, the eggs have already hatched, further emphasizing that the incubation period for hepatitis A is short. Coming just in time to see all the chaos, here is a small band of panda bears returning to their village after some traveling. Let's zoom up so you can see this better. All these small pandas are daycare children. You can see the sign here reads, Traveling Daycare. This kind adult panda takes these daycare children on small adventures during the day. And the fact that they are traveling will help you remember that hepatitis A often infects travelers. And the fact that this is a daycare will help you remember that hepatitis A is often transmitted at daycares amongst all those germy little children. Now look at this little cells hut over here to the left of these guys. The village lives near a large water source, so they are able to acquire lots of shellfish to eat, buy, and sell. And you can see all these crabs hanging from the cells booth. And this will help you remember that hepatitis A is often transmitted through contaminated shellfish. Now if a person is at a daycare, traveling, or eating shellfish, how is it that people are actually getting the disease inside of them? It's the fecal oral route. To help you remember this, we have shown this silly little panda stepping in poop. You can see him looking at the bottom of his foot, getting his face awfully close to the poop. I hope that small panda knows not to eat the nasty poo. Anyways, this will help you remember fecal oral transmission. Now let's talk about some of the symptoms of hepatitis A. Upon seeing the chaos of his village, this little panda is overwhelmed and couldn't help but vomit in terror. This will help you remember that hepatitis A can cause nausea and vomiting. Over here, we have a wise old turtle trying to help all the frightened townsfolk keep their wits about them. And this pig here was lighting up a cigarette to help calm his nerves. This wise turtle wouldn't let the pig do that to himself, so he smacked the cigarette right out of the pig's hands. You could say that this turtle has a strong aversion to self-soothing through cigarette use. This will help you remember that patients with 
with active hepatitis A infections often experience an aversion to cigarettes. Now this band of wolves has been carrying this pig over here for quite some time, keeping it in this bag as they travel from place to place. They wanted to save the pig in case they got hungry, kind of like food storage for wolves. Anyways, the more that they saved the pig and put off eating him, the skinnier and more famished the pig got. Now you can see his ribs. Poor emaciated pig. Anyways, this starving pig represents the anorexia that hepatitis A patients often experience. Next, we have this wolf on fire over here. Some of the flames from the asteroid actually charred his fur. This yellow-orange charred fur represents jaundice. After all, hepatitis A causes inflammation of the liver. So it makes sense that it would cause jaundice. However, many patients don't get jaundice. To help you remember that either presentation is possible, we have shown this wolf singed but only half singed. The singed inflamed part represents jaundice. Then there is a distinct line delineating a lack of flame. This indicates that some patients may not have jaundice. Now as the fire started, this cow in the back of the palanquin started to lose his grip and nearly let the emperor fall. Thankfully, he managed to regrip it but strained his abs in the process. Look at him reach for his abdomen in pain. The fact that he is reaching for that liver-shaped spot on his abdomen represents the fact that hepatitis can cause pain around the liver. So patients with hepatitis A can have right upper quadrant pain. Now this other cow at the front is also experiencing belly pain, but for a completely different reason. One of the people sitting on the city council is furious at this emperor and his cruel leadership, so she's taken her city council gavel and smacked this cow right in its liver spot. This represents the councilman bodies which are often seen on liver biopsy of patients. This micrograph shows a trichome stained liver biopsy. Over here you can see the apoptotic body, and it has that eosinophilic color to it. And now notice that a lot of the surrounding hepatocytes look healthy and normal. Councilman bodies are often found near healthy cells. Lastly, over here you can see the ballooning of some of the hepatocytes. This is also seen on liver biopsy, and it's associated with those councilman bodies. I like to think of it in this way. The hepatocyte swells, or balloons, that's part one, and then it undergoes apoptosis and dies, part two leaving behind this eosinophilic councilman body. Now, even though the cow caught the palanquin preventing the emperor from falling to the ground, this box of needles resting here started to spill out, sending needles flying everywhere around. The emperor brought these needles to this town in the hopes of torturing some of the townspeople through sadistic needle poking. Thankfully, there's some poetic justice here because the emperor himself has just been stabbed by one of his own needles. This needle represents the hepatitis A vaccine, and, like all vaccines, Receiving the hepatitis A vaccine is an excellent way to prevent disease. Hepatitis A vaccinations are mainly used as post-exposure prophylaxis, so people in high-risk situations or jobs, or those who have been potentially exposed during an outbreak, should receive the hepatitis A vaccine. To help you remember this, we've shown some of these needles landing on one of the nearby wolf guys. Traveling with the emperor exposed him to certain dangers. You may even call his job high-risk. And as you can see, he's getting stabbed up by those needles, receiving more than enough post-exposure prophylaxis. So again, hepatitis A vaccines are mainly used as post-exposure prophylaxis. Now another wolf was struck by some needles, and to add to the pain he's already experiencing from all those needle pokes, he happened to run directly under these falling tiles from the meteor-struck roof. Look at those tiles landing on this wolf's head. If you look closely, you can see that these tiles look like immunoglobulins. These tiles represent the fact that post-exposure prophylaxis can also be accomplished by administering immunoglobulins. Now this building is on fire, and this wolf, in an uncharacteristic moment of valor and bravery, is actually trying to put the fire out by himself. He found some nearby water and is tossing it on the burning building. Water is our recurring symbol for supportive treatment, since water is universally necessary for basically any illness. And the main treatment for anyone with an active hepatitis A infection is supportive care. Just let them fight through it. Over here, we can see a little pig in a little house, including those antibody-shaped shingles. These represent IgG antibodies, which look quite different from the pentamer shape or snowflake shape of the IgM antibodies. As you can see, this pig feels well protected. He has that smug smile on his face. He feels safe because he has sharp shingles surrounding the entrance to his tiny fortress. This represents the fact that IgG antibodies against hepatitis A indicate the patient is immune. Now that we've covered the image, let's review with a question. A 50-year-old female with a 20-pack year history presents to the physician complaining of abdominal pain, nausea, and vomiting. She endorses recent travel to a developing country. Just prior to returning home to the United States, she recalls hearing about a viral outbreak in that area that caused vomiting. Her temperature is 38.4 degrees Celsius, or 101.2 Fahrenheit. Physical examination is significant for right upper quadrant abdominal pain upon palpation. Scleral icterus is absent. She denies a history of IV drug use or unprotected sex. Laboratory results are shown below. AST is 163 and ALT is 182. Which of the following is true regarding the pathogen most likely responsible for her symptoms? A. The period between exposure and symptom onset is 3 to 4 months. B. 
B. IgM antibodies will develop against envelope antigens during the acute phase. C. Hepatitis serology would reveal the presence of anti-hepatitis A virus IgG antibodies. Or D. A liver biopsy may reveal eosinophilic bodies surrounded by normal cells. Hopefully from the question stem, you notice that this patient likely has viral hepatitis. She has abdominal pain in her right upper quadrant, and her liver enzymes are elevated. And you should also be thinking of a viral hepatitis that causes nausea and vomiting. This makes hepatitis A most likely. Plus, she was traveling to a developing country, which is one of the risk factors for hepatitis A. So thinking of hepatitis A, the correct answer is choice D. Liver biopsy may reveal eosinophilic bodies surrounded by normal cells. This describes councilman bodies. Recall these eosinophilic councilman bodies here adjacent to the healthy hepatocytes. And to help you remember councilman bodies, we have this city council member smacking the liver of this carrying cow. Now choice A describes the incubation period, and three to four months is considered long. And we know the incubation period for hepatitis A is short. Remember those incubating eggs sitting there, not hanging from a long tree branch or anything? Short incubation periods are generally considered to be less than a month in duration. So answer choice A, is wrong. Choice B is wrong because hepatitis A does not have an envelope. Remember all those naked pigs? If you chose this answer, you may have been attracted to this choice because the IgM antibodies are present during the acute phase of hepatitis A. And that's true. However, they're not directed against the envelope because hepatitis A doesn't have an envelope. So choice B is wrong. And lastly, choice C is wrong because anti-hepatitis A virus IgG antibodies indicate immune status. Remember that little pig who built a little shelter out of IgG antibody shingles? So if this patient has an acute hepatitis A infection, she likely doesn't have IgG antibodies yet. And that should be all you need to know about hepatitis A.